Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. We'll get started in just a few minutes. Thank you for your patience. Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Modernization Without the Angst, Directory Replacement Edition. My name is Holly Talari. I'm with Radiant Logic and I'll be your moderator for today's program. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that your lines will be muted for the duration of the webinar. However, if you have a question, you may enter it in the question portal and we will have a Q&A session at the end if time allows. If we are not able to get to your question during the webcast, we'll send a personal email to follow up. Also, this webcast will be recorded and sent out along with a copy of the presentation slides within the, within the next 24 hours. Our speaker today is Wade Ellery, VP of Solutions Architects and Senior Technical Evangelist with Radiant Logic. Wade has extensive experience in IT direct and channel software and services, sales, and management. He has in depth knowledge and experience in enterprise IEM, IGA, risk, and compliance in IT security challenges. Take it away, Wade. All right. Thank you, Holly. So today we're going to talk about modernizing without the angst directory replacement edition. Now, for any of those of you at home with teenage children, you understand how much you'd love to do without the angst, the extra drama in your life. And especially when you're talking about replacing a directory infrastructure that your company has likely had for a decade or two, doing that in a simple way that is straightforward and easy to manage with a minimum of business disruption sounds like a really attractive proposition. So let's take a look today and see how Radiant Logic can help you do that. First, I wanna outline sort of the world we're living in right now and really what's happened in the last five, seven years. It has been a real transition that all of us have faced in the identity management space. We've lost control of that central set of, of information, of assets, of employees. We used to be in one building. We used to be able to own the machines, own the applications. Everything was complicated back then, but we had no idea how much more complicated it could be. Now my applications are hosted at, at uh, customer sites, vendors and partners and SaaS developers. I've got my employees, but now I've got contractors, partners. I've got customers I have to deal with. I've got devices coming in, not just laptops and, and pad, iPads, but I got my, my end users actually working off of their phones and needing to be able to integrate IoT devices into my infrastructure. So this has caused a real stress on the legacy infrastructure that we have. The old world that we built on is not really designed to support this kind of exponential expansion, this universe growing out in all directions at the same time. So we need to look and see how we can actually start to evolve our current infrastructure in a way that helps us get our arms back around all those identity challenges and how we can manage that. But first we have to recognize where a lot of the underlying challenge comes from. And it comes from the nature of the way we built our infrastructure. And this is nobody's fault. This is the way the world evolved because initially we all kind of worked on the idea of I'm on an island, I build everything I need on my island. My island is self-sufficient. I'm good, thank you. And that's the way applications were built. They incorporated their own internal users. They had everything they needed. And as long as you signed on with the right credentials and had the right provisioned access, you were good to go. But then we started ending up with dozens and dozens and dozens and hundreds of applications to sign into with different credentials and different identities and different passwords. And this became very critical and very difficult to work with. So then we started standing up directories and databases and Active Directory to try and solve this, but we ended up creating even more of a complex web of interconnectivity between these systems and these platforms 
because these systems themselves, the directories, the databases, the user stores that we used were static and they were not able to adapt to more than one function at a time. They had one structure, one schema. So I ended up standing up even more and more complex environments as I went along. And then lo and behold, somebody got the bright idea to externalize all my applications, host them in the cloud, re uh, provision all my users into those endpoints and now make me manage assets I don't even have control over and everything got even more complex and more difficult. So that's the kind of world we live in today. So how do we move and how do we evolve forward from that? Well, the key premise of Radiant Logic is, is that all the things we've learned in kindergarten about single sign-on, we can apply to the idea of identity management as a whole. The idea of single sign-on is I go one place, I authenticate once, I issue you one set of credentials, and I can do everything I need to do to get my job done. And whatever goes on in the background, I don't know, I don't care, it all seems magical to me. And that's a wonderful world to work in. And we have some clients that are getting close to achieving that model and some that are very young in that curve, even this late in the game for single sign-on. But the underlying challenges behind that single sign-on platform, behind that integrated world that the end user experiences is still a very diverse, very complex, very disassociated set of identity information that's needed to supply that single sign-on experience. It's needed to be able to give that user the ability to authenticate and authorize into those applications. And now as I move more and more in towards a zero trust architecture, where I'm going to go to a least privileged model. I'm gonna provision the minimum amount of access into endpoints, and I'm gonna authorize users continuously based on attributes that I have about those users and the assets they're trying to access and the risk scores that they're carrying and the endpoints that they're coming in from all this rich data has to be available and evaluated and correlated in a way that it can be consumed at the time of authentication and authorization at the speed of a directory so the user isn't waiting. You don't want your employees waiting, they will go find a different job if you frustrate them that much. You don't want your customers waiting, they will go find a different vendor if they're not able to get their access. I gotta tell you, every time Salesforce spins that little wheel while I wait for my records to load, I wonder if there's another CRM platform out there that might be a little faster. Luckily, they keyed the market, so they're not really in a challenge, but you have to be competitive, you have to be performant. So what do I do? Well, you look at Radiant Logic as the solution. We are able to connect to all the sources of identity that are behind the scenes, pull that information forward into Radiant, give you a sandbox to work in without affecting your backend sources of data, without breaking your applications. It allows you to start to correlate, aggregate, disambiguate, build a global profile of this user information and bring all that together and then be able to serve that information up in exactly the format, the schema, the structure, and the protocol that those applications want. And that's critical, the format, the schema, the structure, and the protocol because when we're going to talk about migrating off of your legacy LDAP applications, one of the challenges they have, one of the bottlenecks they create is a single schema, a single structure, a single protocol, a single set of users, and they don't have the ability to serve multiple purpose purposes simultaneously. So you end up setting up multiple directories or you tell innovative people in your organization to come to you with new ideas and new applications and new things they want to test to help optimize the customer interaction or streamline the business or bring more functionality. And you say, no, I'm sorry, that would be half a million dollars. You need your own developer and it's going to take six months. If you don't have all that, I'm just going to shelf your idea because it's too hard. With Radiant Logic, that's a couple of days. It doesn't take a developer and we can get you up and going. And if what you tried to do wasn't successful, that's fine. It was an attempt. Let's build you another view of data for the next time you come along because the effort to do this and to innovate and modernize is so much simpler when you have Radiant Logic in place. In addition to that, if we look at the current world we're working in, and again, especially when you're looking at the cloud, we are having to provision identity information into different endpoints, into Azure AD, into Okta's universal directory, into assets inside AWS, but also into SaaS applications like ServiceNow and Zendesk and Salesforce. 
We have a large healthcare organization that's built a view of the data in Radiant Logic. And when we aggregate data together and build a specific set of information in a specific set of users, attributes, format, structure, and schema in a particular protocol, we call that a view. Each view can be unique. It can serve an individual purpose. They've built a view for each of the SaaS endpoints they need to provision identity into. And now that endpoint gets exactly the information in the format it wants. It's F name and L name instead of given name and SN, whatever needs to be mapped for that endpoint. And they have complete tracking of all the information from the full life cycle of that user provisioning, modification, deprovisioning, and correlating that identity back into the views and radiant logic. At the same time, we are an access management point. We are a credential authentication point for credentials stored in Radiant or proxy to backends like Active Directory or a database. And we can provide that authentication to SaaS applications that need claims or directly to LDAP applications looking for a bind to be able to authenticate and authorize users. So the capacity to build this image once model it in different views and use it many times is, is a paramount value within the Radiant Logic solution. So how do we do that? Well, we are platform agnostic, we are schema agnostic, we are standards based. So we'll talk to anybody that talks to standard protocol, LDAP, SQL, JDBC, web services, well-documented APIs, REST, SKIM, SOAP, whatever, flat files, CSVs, if we can connect to the information, it's reasonable, it's rational, we can bring that into Radiant Logic. Now, once it's in Radiant Logic, we're going to not only bring that information in, but we're going to maintain the context. If there was a hierarchy or relationship in that directory tree, if there's tables that have relationships, we can create those within Radiant Logic. So you have the intelligence of context wrapped in with the intelligence of identity data. Then we're gonna realize that the same user exists in multiple platforms simultaneously. I have an AD account, I have a security account, I have a training account, I have an account in the sales system, I have an account in the CRM platform, I have an account up in service. Now, I need to build a single pane of glass where I can see all the places Wade Ellery exists, all the accounts that he has, and then join those accounts together into a global profile that gives me a full set of attributes I can use in my zero trust infrastructure to provide granular authentication and authorization to applications that can understand that context. And as I evolve more and more towards an ABAC model, I enrich my profile with more and more attribute information. But don't worry if attributes are coming from databases and directories and flat files and they're labeled with different names, we handle all that correlation, integration, building and correlating groups, defining roles, building context, storing the results of these calculations in Radiant Logic so they're highly available. So when an application calls, we're not trying to make a complex query and association and correlation on the fly. That takes too long. It doesn't scale. It doesn't work. We build this, materialize it on disk, make it available at speed and at runtime for the applications. But we monitor the backends in near real time when available for all changes and apply those changes to the records directly so we're able to update the data in near real time in Radiant so that the application that's querying us is always getting the right information. That application can query over LDAP, which most access management systems do, most integration platforms, IGA platforms do. Reporting tools like Crystal Reports can, can query us in SQL. That's what they're built to is making SQL queries. We can get web services and API and SOAP interactions. We can be queried by SKIM. We can be queried by REST. We can also be updated by these protocols. So if an application needs to write back to Radiant Logic for user registration, for changing a role in the organization, for changing a password, those can travel over the same protocols. We're not asking the applications to change. We're not asking the sources of identity to change. We're saying, hey, we'll be the United Nations. We'll do all the translation, transformation, delivery. You guys just tell us what you want, tell us what you have, and we'll make that available. This is a very powerful platform now to build your next generation identity management directory on. So looking at that challenge of now migrating from an existing legacy LDAP environment onto this modern infrastructure, what do you want to do? Well, I want to start with taking inventory. I want to understand 
what I have in my current model without disrupting the platform. Radiant Logic can connect to the existing directories, lift that information into Radiant, and let you see that data as it exists on the back end. I can then decide if I want to enhance that data. Maybe I've always wanted to add in 20 more attributes from my security database into my AD profile or my LDAP iNetwork person profile, but I can't because extending the schema was too much of a challenge. I couldn't get control. Now I can do that. I can build out the view of the data in Radiant that I want, again, without disrupting the back end. I can join those identities together that exist in multiple platforms. I can rationalize my groups inside my directory. If I've got nested groups, I can unnest those groups so I get a clear view of all the users in my environment. I can populate member of attributes on all the users, even though they may be getting their access through a nested protocol. If I have applications that don't understand how to decompile a nested group, or especially my IGA platform, which is it gonna do well with nested groups below two or three layers, I can really start to manage this information in a much more effective way. And I can make this highly available, highly scalable to literally tens of millions, hundreds of millions of objects inside the directory store. Traditional LDAP, around 3 million users, and this is not a, a knock on any one product. It's just the fact that LDAP was built on the idea that if I want to have more access, I stand up more, more servers that are serving the same data in parallel but I need to keep that data in sync. So I need to keep any changes synchronized between those multiple servers. Well, the challenge is that around 3 million users and a reasonable amount of churn, I start to spend more time synchronizing my changes between all my nodes than I do answering queries. And the performance in that platform drops off dramatically. When you start talking about tens of millions, fifties of millions, hundreds of millions, it doesn't scale, it doesn't work. It doesn't operate in that way effectively. With Radiant Logic, we went back about seven years ago and built our own platform to make this possible, to actually support that kind of structure, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So how do you go about migrating off a legacy directory infrastructure and modernizing your environment at the same time with a minimum amount of disruption? Well, think of this as replacing or trading in your old car. Now, this little car probably served you well, um, you probably got it on the cheap when you were in college and all your friends laughed, but it got you to class every day. And when it rained, you had something over your head. And so you loved your little car, but, you know, it got a little bit old. It got a little bit slow and it wasn't getting you any, uh, any atten positive attention on the road. So you decided to upgrade your car, which is perfectly reasonable. Everybody does that. Now you, you either need to because your car needs to be modernized or you've got the opportunity now to actually move to something more modern. So let's look at a sleek, hybrid, electric, modern car with power windows and all these other features and safety features built in. Wouldn't that be great if we did that? Well, you know, what if for the same effort, the same price, the same amount of time, you could move from a car to a Dreamliner? You could actually migrate from something on four wheels that stops at the ocean and can't go any further to something that can fly across the country in four hours and take you all the way to London. That's the level of differentiation and capability change from moving from a standard LDAP directory to replacing your LDAP directory with Radiant Logic. When you bring Radiant Logic into play, when you bring all the power of Radiant Logic to bear, you actually now can cross oceans. You actually now can integrate at a much higher level. You can perform at a much higher scale. You can operate with much richer data. You can support a much more robust environment. You can move towards a zero trust architecture. So let's imagine that we're gonna be actually be flying in a Dreamliner. How do we go about doing that? What's the model I do to get there? Well, every system expects a source of truth. So you want to make sure you populate your Dreamliner with truthful information, with data sources you know to be authoritative. Now, the Dreamliner itself, Radiant Logic, may turn out to be an authoritative source for certain information. If you want to provision into Radiant Logic from your uh, identity management administration platform, you want to have users register directly into Radiant Logic. It is a full LDAP v3 compliant directory structure, again, built to scale the hundreds of millions of objects. It's an excellent repository for that identity data. 
But on top of that, you may have additional information in your infrastructure that you want to pull from Active Directory, other LDAP infrastructures, databases, cloud applications, HR platforms, APIs, SCIM interfaces, all those systems. And all those systems are going to potentially feed that data into all the components of your zero trust architecture, access management, customer identity management, governance, PAM, privilege account management, machine learning and AI, risk scoring and profiling, seeing integration with your NAC, so software defined perimeters, and now application, legacy application integration. So how does all this work? What's the bridge between these two worlds? Because it's not scripts. It's not each individual platform doing it one off on its own over and over again. It's building in an identity data fabric into this infrastructure. That's where Radiant Logic sits between the sources and the targets. Now, if we are replacing a one-for-one -one with an LDAP infrastructure, then we are now that source. We can be standalone in that scenario, and we can still make that information available to applications that are used to seeing that data a certain way, to your IGA platform for governance, to other access management tools to broaden the access to those resources, whatever you need to do with that, across all the vendors you're familiar with and comfortable with. We're not replacing those vendors across the top of this slide. This is the identity fabric sitting on top. These are all the players in the symphony. We are the music. So we compose the music and deliver it to the applications that do the work. We're the fuel for those engines. And that's the role that Radiant Logic plays. Now, when you're being an LDAP directory replacement, then we're being consumed by applications that need and expect to see that LDAP back in providing authentication and authorization. So when I talk about replacing an LDAP directory, a legacy LDAP directory, what am I talking about? I'm talking about Oracle, OUD, ODSCE. I'm talking about platforms that are out of service, that the vendor says, we're no longer supporting that platform. It is end of life. Oh, but for a premium, we will still answer the phone if you call and have a problem, but it's really gonna cost more and more every year, the farther you get away. And if there's a security hole or patch, we're not gonna apply it on that old code. Sun One is still around. I remember when Sun was a company <laughs> decades ago, but that architecture still exists. It was the original iPlanet Sun One directory, the original LDAP. It's, it's an iconic platform and it ran and it works, but maybe it's time to dust it off and see if we can get into the modern world. E-directory was an amazingly powerful directory infrastructure. I worked on Novell from my childhood. I still find e-directory in place now, but one of my best scenario stories is one of our customers who was on a very large e-directory platform, migrated that whole infrastructure over to Radiant Logic. We were able to mimic the e-directory structure and schema and format of the data. So when the applications were repointed to Radiant Logic by flipping the DNS pointers for those IP addresses, they hit Radiant Logic and were getting all the information they needed from Radiant Logic, thinking it was still eDirectory. When eDirectory was gone, they never told the application owners they flipped the back end. It was that seamless. Now imagine doing a deployment where you can flip everything over and no one even knows. It's like third grade when you got a haircut and you went to school and nobody noticed. It was the best haircut ever because nobody teased you. If you don't have an issue migrating your directory, think how successful that would be. Think of the removable of angst that you would experience at that point. Again, Tivoli directory services, they're still sitting out there. CA directory, Open, Open DJ, these are all prime legacy LDAP directories that are really screaming for someone to upgrade and update them to a modern infrastructure like Radiant Logic. And when I say legacy, I say legacy from the standpoint of even if they are still being supported by the vendor, they are a single structure, single schema, single set of users, single format infrastructure. They are built to show you one view of the data and to be able to use that same source of information to serve multiple purposes, to provide data in different views for different applications that have different requirements, you have to stand up another set of servers. You have to then manage another set of servers. You have to be able to um, patch and secure and, and penetration test and monitor and update and manage those platforms. And now with the push to go to cloud resources, if you look at the actual dollar cost of spinning up another AIM uh, instance, 
in EW, an AWS or another server inside Azure, you've got a hard dollar value you can point to. Intel actually came back and did an analysis that found a 73% hard dollar cost savings in moving off of a distributed LDAP infrastructure and centralizing all their application integration access off of Radiant Logic because we could replace multiple instances of these platforms with one system. And again, scaling to millions, hundreds of millions. So you're saving on licensing and maintenance fees. You've got end of life support issues that are getting more and more expensive. Those are being taken care of. You've got inadequate performance in your environment. Believe me, this machine screams. We just did some bench testing recently for straight subtree queries, multiple attribute subtree queries, 250,000 queries per second is the performance we're pulling off of five servers. The same scenario doing binds, look up the user, pass the credential, validate the credential, answer with a bind, 105,000 binds per second. That's amazing throughput. That's throughput where end users don't even know that they're being authenticated. That's what you're looking for. And the flexibility to incorporate and, and use and leverage this with new applications. So what am I going to do? How am I going to get there? This sounds exciting, but it sounds daunting. I'm here and I got to cross the bridge and get to grandma's house. Is it really that easy? Yes, it is. Because Radiant Logic will help you at every step along the way. First, we're going to take some inventory. We're going to do some house cleaning. We're going to do some analysis on your existing LDAP infrastructure and decide what LDAP systems can we aggregate into a single platform? What do we need to stand up different data sets? How is that information sourced? What's the quality of the data in there? How much data cleanup do I need to do? Because when you're moving from one house to another, you don't take all the garbage and junk in your garage from the house you're in now and just move it over to the house you're going to. You clean out the garage. You have a garage sale. You get rid of some of the old furniture that won't fit that you don't like anymore. And when you're in the new house, you have a new pristine environment with just stuff you wanted to bring with you. To do that, you have to be able to know what's there. So Radiant Logic will help you actually see into your infrastructure and build that. Now you're gonna select your new storage platform. You're gonna, you're gonna solidify your choice on Radiant Logic and be able to then start to migrate your data to that platform. Once it's migrated over, you're gonna be testing your applications against that information while maintaining the original data LDAP directory source in a parallel scenario or in a, a um, virtualized scenario, so I have rollback and cutover capabilities, so I'm recoverable if there's an instance where I didn't get the outcome I was suspecting or hoping for, and then I cut everything over, and I should be good at that point to go forward from there with this whole clean new world. So discovery, analyze, work out dependencies, quality of data, work out your best case scenario. This is your chance to design your dream world. What would your base case scenario look like if you could get it? How would you build that? What if you could add more attributes to your profile for applications that are starving for it? What if I could get rid of some kludgy workarounds that I built in my applications or in other places? All those scripts I built to do manipulations of data I can now do in the directory. Now, once I have this prototype built and designed, I start testing it without disrupting my back end, without destroying what I have in place, without uh, making my applications do a cut over and pray, I get to basically verify everything works and then I deploy, I migrate, I burn it in and make sure everything's good and then turn off the back end when I'm done. So we're gonna do this on the Radiant Logic platform. What is the Radiant Logic platform? Well, the Radiant Logic platform is a host of solutions built around the federated identity engine that I've been speaking about today. So the federated identity engine has this capabilities for multiple protocols, correlation, aggregation, multiple views of the data, all this complexity in the HDAP store that makes it available for you to use as a 22nd century directory. Replacement. Now we have our universal directory, which is a highly scalable LDAP directory. You can use that standalone to replace an LDAP infrastructure. And with that, we use our directory migration tools that can assist you in pulling the data from the backend directory into Radiant Logic in a phased approach that allows you to go through the steps of design and discovery and testing 
before you cut off the back end to make sure the applications are seeing the information in the way they need to see it. And when you're totally done and comfortable with that scenario, be able to finally migrate the last set of data over, turn off the back end and be completely on the universal directory. Now, on top of this, for other purposes, as you expand the use of Radiant Logic, because we're like a potato chip, you can't have just one. Then you'll want to know about, well, wait a minute, I need to patiently push information to other endpoints. I need to provision into those clouds. You talked about that customer who built views specific to each of those cloud endpoints that he could provision to. Our global synchronization uses multiple protocols, multiple structures, data transformation, message queuing, and guaranteed delivery to make sure that data is moved around the infrastructure on-premise into the cloud, wherever it needs to go, when it needs to move. And those insights, reports, and administration let me leverage this single pane of glass, let me leverage this tremendous global profile to be able to actually operate now in a way of visibility and capabilities where I can actually see the world that I'm working in and how that looks. And then I've got a single sign-on component so if I want to snap on some federated access, throw some SAML up there, do some claims-based authorization, get a little OIDC going, I've got Radiant Logic's ability to expose all this data in additional protocols beyond LDAP, SQL, REST, SKIM, and web services, but now SAML, WS Federation, WS Trust, OIDC, and, and OAuth. So what's under all this? Well, as I mentioned, there's two components here. There's the storage layer, that little triangle on the right, and the integration layer, the engine, the brain, the functional piece of the, of the application that can do all this manipulation, correlation, aggregation, uh, advanced uh, joins. Now, if you're doing a simple LDAP replacement and you don't need to bring in additional data from more sources, you don't need to, to do a lot of data aggregation, group rationalization, manipulation of data, you just want a good solid scalable repository that's gonna be able to support you for the next 20 years, then just go ahead and get the directory uh, service itself. And you're fine with that component. And you can later on decide if you want to, to expand the capabilities to a broader set of radiant logic. Now I said 20 years, I've been in this business for 30. I've not seen hardly any products out there that exist more than five years in anyone's infrastructure. Because in the nature of identity management, every five years we get a new shinier version of last year's single sign-on, last year's governance tool. This governance tool is in the cloud. It's better than the one that's on-premise. This one does policy where the old access management just did roles. Whatever is the driver, every three, five years, we rip out what we have and we replace it. Except Radiant Logic, we are foundational. We are platform agnostic, so we will support any new shiny access management governance, PAM platform risk tool that comes along. But we have customers that have been implemented for 17, 18 years with our infrastructure, still running their organizations. And these are large brand name corporations you would recognize that have, I don't know, movie productions and uh, theme parks and provide the business model that drives all that over a period of decades, as the world has evolved, Radiant's always been able to provide value and add to the value of those systems. So that's the key here of Radiant. If you combine these two pieces together, the power gets even greater. So let's talk a little about the universal directory. This is the back end. This is your database. This is your directory replacement platform. This is an LDAP v3 compliant directory. It uses the INET org person schema, although you can use other schemas and extend that schema if you need to very easily. It's built on our big data technology with full text indexing for search with Lucene and Zookeeper to manage that infrastructure. It's highly available. It's deployed in multiple servers in a cluster or in Kubernetes containers. So you always have high availability because we're in the authentication authorization flow. We're like mom, we can't get sick, we can't go home, we have to be at work. So we built this platform to survive anything. And in a multi uh, availability zone, multi-regional data center model, you can have basically uh, sun never sets on radiant logic, high availability that'll handle a tornado in Florida that takes out headquarters while the operations in Omaha keep going along. And it's beyond LDAP now. It's SQL, it's REST, it's STEM. So you have modern protocols here. You're not just telling your developers, you've got to learn LDAP because that's where my data is. You can basically tell your developers who are under the age of 30, go ahead and write in REST. I know it's all you know. 
but it's fine. It's a REST interface. Get some gets, get some puts, you're happy. If it's a SQL query for the existing report infrastructure, we can make that visible and expose that information that way. So the directory migration module is a set of functions within Radiant Logic that are available as a subscription with the understanding that a migration is a time-based effort. It's gonna take six months, it's gonna take a year. It depends on your model and your method. If it needs to be done in four weeks, it can be done in four weeks. It all has to do with how much you wanna burn in, how slow you wanna migrate, whether or not you wanna let people reset their passwords over the time and evolution of their password resets. You wanna migrate their passwords if it's capable of doing that, and that's dependent on your existing system. But in many scenarios, we can bring passwords along. We have models for capturing passwords at login and, and migrating those in the users. So you have different models for doing this, but this gives you a, a time frame to migrate in and allows you to build this infrastructure, integrate the environments, decommission your old system while you are operating in your new platform. And once everything is up and set and ready to go, flip over completely the universal directory, and then just let go of the migration tools. You can just turn them off because the back end is being shut down. There is nothing to move anymore at that point, and you fully migrated your infrastructure. So all this is included in packages available from Radiant Logic. So it's a matter of Having the client applications connect to Radiant Logic, which is potentially initially virtualizing the backend directory store, making sure that everything authenticates and authorizes as it should, data is seen as it should be seen. That's great. Now let's take that virtual view of the backend data and actually cache it, store it inside Radiant Logic. It's still a reflection of what's behind. So the updates going to Sun are still reflected in Sun and they're then mimicked inside Radiant Logic, but the applications are now getting their answers directly from the Radiant Logic layer. Now I can migrate my provisioning and update activities from the backend Sun directory to the Radiant Logic store. Once I have that all tested and fully vetted, I've got all my data in Radiant Logic. I've got all my updates flowing to Radiant Logic. I have everything going on in Radiant Logic that I need. I just convert that cache of the backend data to a local store. And now the data is all solely inside Radiant. I can break this connection to the back end and I've migrated off my back end system. My application owners didn't even have to know, as you saw before with the e-directory migration, if that's the way you want to go. If you want to go fully informed, you can bring people along for the ride and they'll just be amazed that you did all this and they didn't have to scream at you that something broke. While you're doing this, we can go ahead and understand the schema and the structure of your existing environment. We can actually help you migrate that existing environment into Radiant Logic so we maintain the same schema and structure that the applications are used to seeing. So when they're doing subtree searches under groups, expecting to see a CN for HR groups, they're gonna find those groups there. I can also remodel this information if I want to create a new structure or additional structures or views in my data to represent that differently for other systems. And now I can take my existing infrastructure and reflect that in a new hierarchy. I may want to be able to create a big flat tree for my access management layer. I may want to create a new hierarchy for my uh, my governance platform or my video system, which actually uses location data based on a hierarchy to, to give access to resources, whatever might be the case, I can model all this in Radiant. And again, once the applications are connected and they're funneling information through, we can migrate the data over to Radiant Logic and be able to move on to those platforms. So I have a very powerful and very dynamic system here that supports and allows me to move this data going forward. Now, the benefits of using the universal directory over traditional LDAP, and I've called them out, but I'll, I'll highlight here, here directly. First, it's fast and flexible searches of all attributes. The FAA did a shootout between us and ODSEE at one point and basically came back and said, you know, we were doing free tech searches for um, give me everybody in Omaha that is cleared to handle multiple plane runways uh, as an FAA controller. And we got back an answer in milliseconds from Radiant Logic because it can do that multi-attribute subtree searching and build a flexible result because everything is indexed. ODSCE, we're still waiting for it to reply. 
Um, literally never came back with an answer. Couldn't handle querying that deeply. And the challenge is, I don't want to beat up on, on legacy LDAP directories, but they're built on a B-Treve index, which was designed to find one user in a long list of users because all they're trying to do is authenticate credentials to let people get into applications or look for attributes on a particular single user by searching on that CN of that user. With Radiant Logic, because we use a bottom-up index, we allow you to free text index everything and search across multiple attributes. So I can look at things like everybody in Chicago that works for Dieter Schuler, that's assigned to large accounts, that has uh, Wisconsin as a territory and get back a list of the salespeople that fit that criterion and then decide to give them access to a particular resource. Writes are faster in Radiant Logic. We have optimized the the synchronization using block level synchronization between our nodes, and we've optimized to writes so we can write to the backends much faster than a traditional LDAP directory. And that's been a bottleneck for a lot of organizations that have not been able to deploy a directory solution in certain scenarios because the amount of writes were too cumbersome, they get queued up, and then people were waiting because they changed their password or they, they signed up for something or they registered and the time it took to get them written and read was too long for the user experience. We can eliminate that bottleneck. And again, because we're doing everything in a Lucene index, it's highly available, highly scalable, out to hundreds of millions of objects. We're at about 280 million objects in a telco in Europe right now, um, handling a very complex infrastructure in an LDAP related model. Now, deploying this, again, our configuration out of the box is a three node cluster. It can be a five node cluster if you need that kind of throughput. Believe me, three nodes handles a tremendous amount of uh, capacity in identities and throughput. And then we can connect to all the backend sources, bring that information in. The leader will send all updates through block level replication out to the followers so we don't compete with the users for access. You don't have that drop off in performance that you do from standard LDAP directories when the synchronization between nodes starts to argue with the ability of the user to access the data. And again, this is designed so whole servers can be lost. The system still functions and operates, answers queries, is up and available. It will automatically rebuild that server once that server is replaced and rejoin it to the cluster. And we can run in a Kubernetes environment with containers inside multiple availability zones and multiple worker nodes. So literally here I can walk in with a shotgun and start blowing up servers and chances of hitting enough boxes to kill Radiant, very, very small across multiple worker nodes in an environment of multiple availability zones. So the ability to offer high availability, low maintenance, low updates, automatic recovery, if a node has a problem, it just gets replaced by a new node coming, being spun up. If I'm updating operating systems and if I'm updating uh, data itself, it can all be done in a, a Kubernetes managed structured model. So my life gets just a lot simpler running in that, that particular infrastructure. And just to talk a little bit more about the capability of Radiant Logic, this is something that a lot of people that we work with, especially in the Active Directory environment, have a challenge with is, hey, I've got a new application and it wants me to extend the schema in Active Directory with three new attributes that I'm going to use to uh, provide additional layer of security for this application that needs to store this data in AD. Well, two things happen. One, your AD management group is this really nice group of people that is happy to accommodate anything you want, extend the schema, no problem. But if you actually look at their directory, their schema is a disaster. There is stuff all over the place. Nobody knows what attributes are still valid. Nobody knows what attributes belong to what requirement. Nobody knows if an attribute is removed, if it's gonna break something. And it's just a chaotic situation that makes the system very unstable and very difficult to manage. To prevent that, and not saying that's a bad thing, I'm just saying that's a possible outcome of unbridled schema extensions. To prevent that, the AD team says, I'm sorry, we're not letting you anywhere near our AD schema. You're on your own, buddy. I can't help you. So what do you do if it's case B? Or what do you do if it's case A? You bring in Radiant Logic. You let Radiant Logic spin up that data. We can connect the Active Directory. We can virtualize the data in AD so it looks like the data in Radiant Logic is an Active Directory schema 
and structure mirror of what you have in your environment. So your applications already know where to go, what to expect, what groups to search for, what hierarchy they're looking for, what OU structure might be in that back in Active Directory. But now I can join additional attributes to that view of AD inside Radiant Logic, store those attributes in our LDAP HDAP store, join them to the AD profile. It looks like the AD schema was extended, the application gets what it wants, and the back end AD environment never got altered. You're happy as a clam and ready to go. And if I need to provision that extended data set out to a cloud application, because it's expecting that additional attributes or I need it to respond to a query, all that data is available in Radiant Logic through any of the protocols we've discussed as a visible view of the data. So it's another scenario here where I can overcome some of the bottlenecks we have with traditional directories. The other one we have that the customers refer to quite often is I have Active Directory information that is core to my infrastructure, but I need to share some of that outside my firewall to a partner, to a vendor, so I can, they can use that information to authenticate and authorize users, or I have remote users that need to be able to come in through my DMZ and authenticate and authorize there before they move any further. But I don't want to just open a tunnel in my Active Directory. That would be crazy. What do I do? Well, you put Radiant Logic in the DMC. You have Radiant Logic connect over an encrypted channel through a Kerberos authentication token to AD. So that channel is locked down. There's no way to violate that. And then you decide what subset of users, what subset of attributes, what subset of groups, just the narrow minimum that you need to be able to expose that you want to put in the DMZ. And you create that view in Radiant Logic and you secure that in the DMZ. Now, one of the advantages here from one of our customers was that they were getting challenges from their security auditors saying, wait a minute, because I can tunnel into AD, I can actually put a bad password request in over and over and over through your uh, DMZ, hit the AD in the back end and lock the back end account. If I spray that across all of your users, I can lock everybody out, which is a really diabolical denial of service. And this happened to be a power company that managed a nuclear reactor. So you don't want to lock everyone out of their management consoles uh, in the middle of the day by doing a repeating denial of service attack that locks AD. So what do we do? In Radiant Logic, in the DMZ, in that doorway to AD, we put on a filter that says, hey, we're going to accept bad passwords up until three bad passwords. At that point, we're going to stop forwarding them to the back end. The backend ED is set to four, so it's never gonna lock because it's never gonna see the fourth bad password. But once we realize that this account has been hit four times in a row by a bad password, we are gonna alert people that this is happening. If a lot of people are being hit all at once, we're gonna alert a lot of people that they're being attacked at the perimeter, but we're not letting this attack get any further. This is just another example of what happens when you have the power of radiant logic to do more than just what your grandma's Oldsmobile used to do. This is the Dreamliner model. This is all these clunky workarounds or problems you just couldn't deal with in a traditional directory infrastructure, or you're locked into a database model, you'd love to move it to a highly uh, authentication authorization business process based directory model, but the functionality and support you need isn't there can't build the context and the relationships, we can do that for you in Radiant Logic. And again, we can make it available over REST. So if you're out there developing phone app based applications and iOS and you're making REST calls to the back end to get the data, Radiant Logic's right there to serve it up for you. So to summarize, as we head towards the top of the hour, and I wanna take some little time for questions here, um, we're gonna basically future proof your directory. This will be the last directory placement you do. Again, we've been at this for 21 years. We have customers that have been with us for 17 on the same architecture, the same infrastructure, upgrading with us as we go along, adding more value to the product. But again, this is the modern 22nd century directory infrastructure that you want to build on if you're gonna be moving forward. You don't wanna just move from a, a little old car to another little medium car and end up a couple of years from now locked into the same scenarios we have, still standing up more different LDAP infrastructures to solve multiple problems or trying to stand up infrastructures now in AWS or in, in Azure in multiple LDAP backends because you have this legacy platform you're dragging around behind you. 
Let's modernize you. Let's get there. Let's be more scalable. Let's be higher, higher performance. And then all the reasons you have for custom data requirements, all the needs you have to move towards zero trust, to be able to get to an attribute-based access control model, to enrich your profile, to do something as simple as add risk scoring to your user profile. So when your access management system is, is evaluating user risk as part of the criterion for authorizing access to a secure resource, they have that information available with the user profile data at the speed of a directory and they don't have people sitting around and waiting to get authorized. And then maximizing your return on investment. That's what Radiant Logic is all about. You're gonna take your existing infrastructure, your existing access management platforms, governance platforms, cyber management platforms, privilege account systems, risk models, software defined uh, perimeter platforms, and we're gonna make them run better, run faster, more efficiently with better access to richer user profile data. Everybody gets lifted as Radiant Logic raises the ocean. So I wanna thank you all for listening to me today. There is more exciting stuff on the way. We are providing a number of webinars in this coming spring and fall. A spring and summer, excuse me. I don't want to miss the summer. It's all about that in California. And um, again, more content available. Keep looking for it posted uh, directly to you and on our uh, webinar management platform. And with that, I want to step back to Holly for a second to see if we have any questions to answer as we approach the top of the hour. We've got about seven, eight more minutes left that we can cover here. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Wade. Um, yes, just like you said, we do have time for a few questions. I saw some come in through the chat already. Um, let me read off a few. Okay. Um, okay, so this one is, what are some of the gotchas to look out for when planning a directory migration or replacement? Uh, some specific pain points to watch for? One of the areas to really look out for, and, and sometimes this isn't looked at up front, but a lot of times credentials are stored in that LDAP directory uh, and the legacy platform that you're migrating off of. And um, you're gonna need those credentials in the new platform. Now, depending on the version and the backend system that you're working on, Radiant Logic can assist in migrating those credentials over to the new system. So it's a seamless experience for the user. They're again, logging in with the same user ID and password as they did in the past. If that's not possible, if that format of the data, if the way the, uh, the directory stored the password is not something we can migrate, then we can look at actually doing an a, a incremental migration where as the user comes in to authenticate, Radiant Logic grabs the authentication, checks to see if they've been migrated onto the new platform. If they are, it will validate them there with their credentials. If they're valid, they get a bind, they're on their way, nothing, nothing new. If they haven't been migrated, it will validate their credentials on the legacy directory. If those are accurate, then we know it is them and we will migrate that user over to the new directory infrastructure inside Radiant, set the new password on that account and the user now has migrated over with his existing credential for us without him again knowing anything is happening. And this is again, something that happens in milliseconds. So the end user experience is seamless. The other alternative, if that's not available, you need to do something on a much faster model is just to ask or push a password reset out across the board. Everybody resets their password. That's all captured and, and integrated into the new infrastructure. And now you've migrated those passwords. But that's one area to look at what people overlook quite often. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, how about what's a typical time frame you've seen for successfully migrating and switching over to the Radiant Logic directory? That really depends on the way you approach the migration. So some people have a very short time frame. They are on a renewal cycle. I've got to be off this directory by the 31st of August. Yeah, August has 31 days. Um, because my, my uh, support contract's renewing and I want to be off before it renews because I don't want to pay for another 12 months and delay this project. So I really need to get this going. So in that scenario, we want to look at optimizing our model. We want to look at moving things as quickly as possible, uh, getting our testing done up front, and being able to move over existing credentials or push a credential change, whatever might be something that can be done in a near real-time model. And this may be something we can do in a production in weeks, a month or two, depending on, again, 
more so the availability of resources, the expertise in the existing platform, the cooperation of the existing team, getting all the players on the field. Those are usually pieces that, that add time to the model. The actual migration integration for Radiant is something that can be done fairly quickly. The alternative is a longer, slower model where I'm migrating passwords over time, or I'm burning in a whole bunch of applications and they're critical applications. So although the first seven I burned in, they worked just fine, no hiccups. I wanna burn in the next 20 to make sure they are all gonna be flawless before I cut off the back end, before I actually finish the last phase of the migration and turn off my original source. So that can be staged over a period of time, depending on how quickly that application testing can be done. And again, this goes back to the, the time frame and the internal logistics and resources of the customer to see how their team operates and what, what's gonna be a reasonable time frame for them. But again, the underlying infrastructure for Radiant is something that can be stood up in weeks, uh, a couple of months, again, depending on resources. Okay. Um, does Radiant Logic offer support for migrating to the universal directory? Yes, it does, actually, um, both in the sense that we have our directory migration module, which is a full set of tools that are designed to be able to carry you through a number of different migration scenarios from beginning to end of moving your data off a of legacy infrastructure onto Radiant Logic's HDAP store and universal directory. But also we have service packages that are designed to provide you with the, the technical resources from Radiant Logic that can actually take this off your hands in cooperation with your application owners, your existing LDAP infrastructure team, we can be the team that comes in, that stands up the directory, that makes the connections to the back end, that, that works on the integration of the provisioning system, tests out uh, connectivity, and then provides the application endpoints so that the application team can do their burn in and then supports you through the whole migration and cut over into production so that you know you've got a, a completely viable system there. So all the expertise and, and SME capabilities around the Radiant project can be provided by our professional services team, working with your team with their own expertise on your existing platforms. Okay, um, there's a few more, but let's get through just one more question before we wrap up. Sure. Um, how would you define a modern directory as compared to legacy directories? <laughs> Um, this is this is sort of a uh, a challenge in that um, we sort of all grew up understanding that that the the IT world operated in, in certain ways that, that an LDAP directory had one schema, one structure, one set of users, and if I needed something different, I set up another LDAP directory. And we we have customer after customer that has built that type of environment. As I mentioned, Intel pointed back to the the cost that they had and just standing up. Uh, different environments to solve different purposes to meet different needs because of the inflexibility of that LDAP directory. Um, a modern directory doesn't shackle you with those kind of restrictions. A modern directory says, hey, um, I've been looking at this challenge now for 20 years and I've really worked hard on removing as much of the bottlenecks, the one-way streets, and the uh, restraints that a traditional directory applies to the way you integrate your environment. So a modern directory is going to have a schema agnostic uh, platform to start with. It'll be able to incorporate schema from anything. Uh, now schema may come in from a flat file, which is just the column headers in a CSV file or a database directory. It may be a custom schema created for a particular device management platform or completely custom application that needs data labeled a certain way. So you need to be able to build an infrastructure that's schema agnostic and can incorporate any form of data into it. But also on top of that, you need to be able to understand that in a full rich zero trust environment, I need to be able to incorporate attributes from multiple sources in my organization. It may not be a platform that somebody necessarily authenticates to, but there is information about that user in that platform that is critical to building their profile, to authorizing access in other places. I may be an administrator on the SAP platform, and it's critical that the training system that we use, that I train on to do my SAP certifications, is able to communicate back that my profile includes evidence that I've passed the certifications to use the SAP tools that I need. This is not the kind of information or relationship you'd find in a traditional legacy directory. 
And then the other piece that's really critical is scale and performance. Again, not to fault the infrastructure, it is what the world built at the time, but we've grown so far past that now. We need to be able to scale to millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of objects and perform at a level where it seems seamless to the end user and to be able to incorporate rich sets of data into that model and deliver that all at the same time to build out an attribute driven, attribute -driven uh, zero trust environment. And the last piece to touch on is just looking at the idea now that we're living in this hybrid world. I'm living on premise and in the cloud simultaneously. When I joined the industry 30 years ago, people said, don't bother with mainframes, don't learn COBOL. I took one class, it was kind of fun because mainframes are going away. They'll be gone in a year now. Well, we're three decades after that and mainframes are still around, they're still healthy, they're still providing real business value. The on-premise environments will be here for a long time. If you're a manufacturer, if you've got infrastructure on-premise, you've got buildings that you have large amounts of users in, if you built this big oval down in Silicon Valley that you put all your employees in, you're gonna have on-premise infrastructure. And you're gonna have a cloud infrastructure. You have to live in a hybrid world. So you have to look at a directory that says comfortable being in the cloud, sitting in AWS or Azure or Google, or sitting in a private cloud and sitting on premise and understanding how to move identity data seamlessly up and down from those organizations in a way that the applications don't understand or need to know where was this data sourced? It's just sitting here waiting for me. If I'm sitting in the cloud, it's right next to me. If I'm sitting on premise, it's right next to me. It's ubiquitously available. That key component is what also distinguishes a modern directory and all that's delivered by Radiant Logic. Okay, thank you. You are out of time. All right, well, thank you everybody. I appreciate you attending. And again, uh, keep your eyes open for more opportunities to learn more about Radiant Logic. If you have any questions, please reach out to us directly. You can reach us on our website, radiantlogic.com. Or if you have an account executive you're working with today, reach out to them. We'd be happy to answer all your questions about directory migration, Radiant Logic, and how we can help you move forward.